Hello everyone, good afternoon. Today I would like to persuade you why all of us should join and become involved in student government because by representing all of our different opinions and voices, we can represent the student body of liberty. Not only do you help others, but also you will be personally rewarded. Have any of you ever felt like any of these expressions? Maybe you were really frustrated that you wanted to just relax and hang out outside your dorm or housing, but you can't because of the rules. Or maybe you would rather study and you can't because you have to come back. Um, addressing issues such as these and changing rules is just one way that student government affects students. Today I'm going to tell you why all of you should use your voice, understand the purpose of student government, be rewarded, and get involved. Uh, because every voice needs to be heard because everyone has a different opinion. A university cannot understand what each one of you is thinking unless there's a variety of people and people with different interests that are telling the student government uh, what they think. A junior government major at Liberty University says that um, anyone can and should join student government. A common misconception is that student government is just for students who want to be in politics. But really, every major can and should be represented to give, um, to make sure there's not a bias of opinion and so that everyone can get their point across. To understand the purpose of student government, uh, Liberty University says that uh, student government is a bridge between the student body and the faculty and administration. Uh, students who are in student government work with each other, also a lot of um, working with people from every class level, also sometimes graduate students, and also keeping the clubs unified. Alf Vizio and Keithia Wilson asked 50 students to answer questions about their participation in student government. Uh, 20 of the students responded, and they were male, females, um, undergraduate, and graduate and they were all at Griffith University in Brisbane, Australia. And their views about their roles in student government uh, represent the basic goals of student government. Obviously on the student side, uh, the first step would be early warning or thinking of a concern and uh, taking control of it and deciding to act on it before it gets out of control. And then advocacy, once you uh, find a concern, you want to bring it up and. Uh, show the faculty what you're thinking, then development, trying to come up with a solution and then feedback after you have a law or something, see if it's working or not working. And the same thing is basically going on with the faculty. They are trying to put the students' perspectives first and also helping with decision making and implementing and feedback. Student government is very important because it reflects the values of democracy. According to Gould Huthian, uh, author of an article in the College Student Journal, he said the goals of student council, which is the same as student government, are to meet the educational, sanitary, sportive, and cultural requirements of university students and to raise their awareness about their national benefits. And Walter P. Med, who wrote um, an article in College Student Affairs Journal, wrote this history of student camar camaraderie through self-governance symbolizes the democratic ideas of our founding fathers and mirrors the development of young people throughout American history. I know that's a lot of words, but just trying to focus on the emphasized words that obviously democracy and free speech and everyone working together is a very important ideal of America. And it's not just in uh, politics or anything, it's in everyday life. So if you start practicing that now, you'll be ready uh, for independent life. Uh, also one way, another way that you can be influenced by student government is to be rewarded. Obviously you're going to learn a lot of skills in student government, such as leadership, teamwork, critical thinking, and decision making. These skills will help you develop lifelong uh, characteristics that will help you in any situation and are not just affecting you in the little meeting, in the little bill that you're passing. So don't take it lightly. Also, um, according to David Bonsall, Rachel Harris, and Jill Marzak, they found that there are several areas of civ civic concern that desperately need leaders. Um, these areas are political participation at the national and local levels, 
trust in public institutions and in one another citizens, participation in family, in voluntary association, personal and com community security, and family integrity and strength. So obviously, civic leaders can affect a lot of areas of life. And the next step is basically just get involved. Here at Liberty University, we obviously have a student government association. The first step would just be to become a senator, and then you can pick a committee that you think would interest you. Also, it counts as Christian service, so if you need to fulfill that requirement next year or if you are uh, upper level right now, you could do that. In conclusion, I just want to challenge you that would any of you want to enter your independent life with only minimal skills in business or politics or even social skills? Obviously, student government is not the only way to do this, but it really will help you learn, and I just encourage you all to get involved, check out the website, and maybe just try it out for a little bit, see what it's like, and see if you learn.